Hey guys, welcome back. It's Lucid, and uh, yeah, we've got another turn for you here with Bug Roos. So, oh, I have the wrong turn up. Um, so, uh, this turn I was expecting, because we basically, I basically declared war with Kailasa last episode, uh, and I had done like that weird little addendum thing, which I hope I included. Um, however, if I didn't. Um, basically, I did the turn, and I had asked... Normally, I would just vulture, but I didn't have a ton of stuff in position, because I didn't think I would need to be vulturing the elves nearly this soon. So I was kind of waiting for stuff to get in position, and I was just going to be friendly and coordinate it with the monkeys, and ask for a very reasonable and small vulturing. And, um, yeah, monkeys told me to go basically get bent in a pretty nice way. Uh, and so we're going to kill them. Uh, now, how I think this actually is going to play out is... There's a monkey army, by the way. I wonder if I didn't tell Maryland or the elves where the monkey army was. I thought he saw it, but maybe he didn't. Because it's like an extremely predictable move by this army. I don't know why he sent a little thug group. But there's not really any mages here to speak of. He's got this guy. And then, like, basically nothing. That guy. Some commanders. I mean, honestly, I could maybe even super combat in this. With some mentally handicapped uh, thug. Certainly if I had Soul Vortex, I could with my immortal dude. Um... So we'll see if he camps out a turn. Well, I won't have Soul Vortex. That's Alt-6. But, alas. This does not look very good for the elves. He's got these two huge fucking armies camping him outside. I think what he's actually going to do is move here and move here. Um, moving here would actually be interesting because he could come and try to take this. Um... I'm not sure if I'm going to be ready. We're going to attack. If this army moves out, we're going to attack here. We're basically... I, I don't know if we'll end up eating Midgard. There's a chance we do. The problem if we do is... We'll probably be the biggest player by some margin, and we might attract a coalition. Um, anyway. But we'll see. What I hope to have happen is that he moves on top of... Um, of Midgard, you know, he know basically the elves have been getting murdered like this basically every turn. Um, so I think he's just going to go on top of Midgard. If he does, then it's going to be a bit of, uh, well, I, it's going to be really good if he does because the elves this turn are getting Conjuration 5. I'm sending them some of my air gems. I can't really spare that many. I need some. Um, I've already sent them 10 before. Um, and I might have even sent them some more before that. I can't remember. But um, I've been talking with them too, and we've been strategizing about how this will go. Um, but basically, I think what he's going to do... Oh, sorry guys, it's late here. I've got major case of the yawns. Um... So what he's going to do, he's going to make these guys his Sabbath slaves, which is pretty good because they've got high air paths and then the ones which are blood can jump in and be Sabbath slaves. And then these guys, not these guys, these guys are going to be his communion masters and they're all air two blood one. Um, and then if he has any more blood ones of these guys, it'd be great. But basically he can get in a big communion, have like... Probably only four slaves and will be enough and just pound reinvigoration every single turn. Um, and maybe do hell power to get the slaves a really high level. Uh, definitely do power of the spheres because he has Volva. And then just drop 30 or 40 elementals on him. And 30 or 40 elementals will literally kill... Uh, it should kill this whole army. It should kill this whole army. Um, in a storm it would obviously do a lot better. Um, the criteria for this working 
is that well there's a few things one is that the flaming arrows actually will do sort of okay um so it's not like this army can't kill the air elementals the issue more is can they kill them fast enough because these air elementals are going to be deleting like, let's just look at this here here's how much stuff is going to die per round it's okay first volley off it's going to target chaff Okay, Air Elemental Summoned. Air Elemental's landing right now. And now maybe he would get Flaming Arrows off in like a hot second. Before the volley of Flaming Arrows lands, assuming he did like 20 in the opening volley, um, that would kill like, let's say four land here, they would kill all, like, five of them could kill all this within, like, one to two turns. This is gonna take, like, two or three, gonna kill them. Um, this whole line, if ten of them land here, it would probably take ten of them, like, five turns to work through. Like, four or five turns. But there's just the first wave, right? Like, there's more air elementals coming. That's important. Um, and once air elementals get hit, they're not gone. They just lose a, like a, a size, basically. So if he gets 40 air elementals, which I think is possible if he has enough gems, he can just absolutely delete this army. It'll be beautiful. So that's what I, ha I hope to have happen. And my outcome from this that I think I want is I'll take this. Well, I don't know. I'll come over here and probably fuck with them. I was going to attack the monkeys here this turn, but I think it's better if I attack them on the same turn. We, I've got... Um, my contribution to this is we're going to gym bait them with Vladimir, who is an heir too, so he can cloud trapeze. Um, the gear we're making for him is a fire plate, a dragon helmet, so that's going to give the fire resistance we're going to need to survive flaming arrows as well as pretty good protection. Um, I, the amulet of Arafin is actually 10 air gems, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we'll do air shield turn one, um, probably followed by mist form turn two. Um, and then we've got an amulet of anti magic. I think the final thing I need to make, and I don't think I have it scripted here. I think the final thing I need to make is a like one of these things. Or maybe we'll do the Pendant of Luck. That's going to make it less likely we die. We're going to have returning on us. so. Um, and we're making a, a Black Steel uh, Tower Shield, which isn't fancy. It's not special. This has a parry of 8. This has a parry of 9. And parry value is pretty important for blocking arrows. So... Super high protection, high parry value means it's going to block a shit ton of arrows. Um, I could also maybe put... I think this will be enough to gem bait it, especially with items. So, uh, we'll see. I, I Actually, let's test it real quick. Let's test it. Hey, what else are we going to do? This is going to be a really short episode. Um, so, here we go. Debug mod... Because actually, people are like way more up on what Jim Bates and what doesn't than I am. They've changed, it'll want to change some of the logic. So the old rules don't really apply. I kind of briefly skimmed through Loggy's notes on it, but uh, in practice, I don't actually really know very well. Um, so let's get Bogarus here and we'll get Patala here. Where are you, Patala? Okay, great. And uh, we'll make the little kit. Okay, great. Okay, renaming allowed. Here we go. All right, so Bogarus, we're just going to make some Staretza. And we're going to put this guy on monthly casting. Uh, Debug Sensei. And then Patala. We've got... Um, let's get a Rudra. He's going to do our thing. And let's get some Nagini here. And let's get a boatload of Marcata archers. Some of these Atavi archers. Some of these guys. And then a few cudgel carrying dudes. 
and we'll put that on repeat recruitment. And then we'll alternate this with getting one of these dudes. And like this, we'll just hit intern a few times. Okay, and we've got some, some dudes present. Um, this is perfect, this is the right one we need. So um, let's make this, and then let's make this and this, and no boots. And then here we're going to give her, I might actually need to do the bracer of protection. Um, it's not a bad idea. However, uh, I think what we're going to do is the Pendant of Luck. Uh, and then did I have something else I was going to make in Miscellaneous? Oh, an Amulet of Anti-Magic. I think they've got Astral Mages. I don't actually know if I need this. We'll have it anyway. Uh, and she'll cast Ritual of Returning. And then on Patala's side, we have big fucking armies. Um, now this should be okay. Uh, we'll give some more Marcata here. We'll have these guys come over this way. We'll get these guys in the semblance of a formation. The Marcata at the back. Um, we'll put hold and attack closest. Um, hold and fire closest. We'll put these guys right here. And we'll put these guys right here. Put them on hold and fire closest. And, uh, yeah, that seems fine. Put you guys here. Put you guys here. Okay. Um, and now what's important is we give this guy some gems. And we are going to see if we effectively gem bait against the huge army. Um... Okay. Now, uh, let's hit up our Staretza. This one has Ritual of Returning on her. Perfect. It is about the kit I would give her. And then we'll have her Magic Phase on there. Um, and yeah, her script actually is going to be super simple. We're going to put her at the back. She'll do turn one... Um, air Shield. I should have Alt 3, I think. Uh, which is going to mean I can do Mist Form. And that will keep me from dying. Um, after that, um, the only thing I would care about is like Twist Fate to make me stay on the battle longer. And then, um, I don't know, maybe Fire Shield in case people try to hit me. Oh no, Astro... Uh, oh, I won't have... I was going to say uh, Body Ethereal, but I won't have the right things for that, so... Uh, let's just do hold and attack. That way she's not fatigued out. That way she's less likely to get a big hit. Um, so anyway, I think that's it. And then Patala, we're just going to chill. And we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to save real quick. All right, so I've saved it. Let's run it. See if we triggered gym use. Or if we get, like, zoinked, turn one. It does not trigger gym use. Oh, I, uh, I paused. I was gonna reset. I realized I can just do it here. So, let's do... this. And let's send her in... And I think all we're going to do with her is like this, and then Mist Form, and then Twist Fate, and then we'll drop a big air elemental. And let's see if this, with the different script, will... Oh, wait. I didn't have Returning on. She's going to die now. I'll probably have to load it, but we'll just see what happens here. Oh, there goes Flaming Arrows. So that did gym use. You can see she's pretty impervious to the archers, though. Uh, let me load it back up and see what happens. Alright, so I've got it back. Um, she's got the thing on her. She's loaded up. We're sending her in. And let's see if this works. And 
Air shield. Okay, yeah, that worked. And finally she gets hit. And does she get sent home? She does. She probably got hit for like one damage. So this will be successful. I, that tells me I need to put some gems on her and let her do air elementals. I could, I think we'll just be safe and do five. Um, but you can see that was extremely effective in terms of her just beasting tons of archery. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to do that to help Jim burn. And then um, the elves are going to ride out and do a shit ton of air elementals. Um, and if that works... What do I get, aside from the uh, undying gratitude of the elves? Well, I'll probably ask for one or two provinces out of it, and then... What will probably happen, though... Uh, and I've got my troops over here. I don't know. I don't know what's probably going to happen. But there's a decent chance I come over and actually just kill the elves. <laughs> I mean... Um, we'll see. I don't, I think he's kind of out of the game now. He's lost so much. I don't think you can come back after being small in expansion and then having so many of your sacreds die. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe I, who knows what I get, but we'll see right now. Some of this is just like weird metagame stuff. Like He's all blustery, like, oh, I think I can defend my stuff. Which, you know, perhaps I would maybe be the same. I wouldn't be the same way. I would totally let me vulture. I would 100% let me vulture. I'm a guy who's neighboring Arco, um, is ready to go to war with them, and I'm asking for these two things, which aren't his, and I'm going to pay him 800 bucks. I would totally have accepted that deal. Especially, like, I've been pretty friendly about it. Well, not super friendly, but pretty friendly. Um... But, yeah, anyway, he's popping his chest up and he wants to, you know, beat on it and be like, oh, not going to back down, not going to be bullied. Yeah, I think that this also reinforces, and sorry, I know my energy's real low. It's probably coming through in the video, but this also reinforces something which I already knew, which is that it's a lot better to do something and then ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Because if I went and vultured these, he wouldn't have had anything to say. He wouldn't have, like, gone to war if I had a huge army on top of this. It's so that I was trying to do it through, like, diplomacy that's got him all rattled. Anyway, I've tried to talk him down. He can't be talked down. He's going to have to get his army wiped. Um, the other thing that's worth thinking about, too, is I've worked with Maryland a fair amount to make sure that you know, to, to help him with his scripting and I'm sending him gems and I'm going to be attacking the, the monkeys on a turn. And, you know, you look at all that and you're like, huh, wouldn't it maybe have been a little better for the monkeys if I hadn't done that? And that is a byproduct of being friendly with people and sharing spoils is that you have people that are interested in you succeeding. Um, if people are not interested in you succeeding, um, you know, because you're saying I'm going to take 100% of their stuff, I'm not going to give anything to you, and your weak, friendly neighbor is now being replaced by a more strident um, and less weak, larger neighbor, um, and go get wrecked. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, that's not something I'm super stoked about. So somebody that's going to be all blustery, not friendly at all, really. I mean, he's friendly, but I don't know. Puffing his chest up. I'm going to do... If, now, if he actually takes the cap, if the air elemental thing doesn't work, which, especially if he has 60 troops, and they're all spread out, um, like super spread out, and Van Jarls are pretty good leaders, and if he has 20 Van Jarls, he can actually put one troop per tile... Archers aren't going to be able to hit shit. All right. And I need to tell him this, but. And then he summons the air elementals. It's going to be good fucking game. That army is going to get crushed. Um, and I'll make sure I'm ready to attack on the flank. That's one of the things that's not going to, that's going to be good about me not attacking right now is if he does move on top, it will be more of a surprise when I cut off some of his retreat routes. Um. I can also maybe magic phase people in here to 
um, like cut off this retreat route too. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, better to work with me than against me. I hope that is the lesson we can prove, though it's also possible I end up eating a bunch of shit. The other thing that's kind of on my mind, um, Arco won a big war against Ulm, um, or a big battle. He put up foul vapors and aerofend and some other stuff. He's definitely ahead of me in research. I don't know how, by how much, but we'll find out because, um, heading out of this fort this turn, we have... Let's rename her. We'll rename her Snooky. We have Snooky the Fivefold Angel, and she's sneaking off with a very meager 100 stealth. Uh, so it'll be very reasonably difficult to patrol her out. And um, she's going to wander off into the Arco lands and try to spy on them and see what their score graphs are. Uh, and if successful, it'd be very nice. Um, we'll have a lot of intel. I think he's at least... 30% higher research than me. Um, but we'll see. We're probably a little close. We're probably a little close. Um, but, um, you know, he put up Foul Vapors, which is a thing. And so I don't have Serpent's Blessing. And there's this kind of awkward window where he has Foul Vapors and we don't have the counters to it. That's a bit annoying. Um... I think I'd rather get the counters and then get some lesser horror and go fuck with them that way. Um, and we can do weird things too, because it's going to be a 3v1. We can like unrest lock his forts down, do a bunch of things that just make it where he can't really fight back. Um, but that's still the plan. It depends how long this thing goes with the monkeys. Part of it, me like pulling, well, there's a few things. I, because he has Aerofin, these archers actually are going to be a bit of a liability. So we're, I'm going to keep the crossbowmen down here to deal with the Atlanteans if they come out. Um, but the archers, we're going to go march off to die against Pandarlog. And I've stopped all archer production. I think I've got some... No, I even turned off the crossbows down here. We're switching to troops. And we're not using the expensive Malia Druzina because um, they're not great at sieging, they're expensive, and ultimately, once Fog Warriors and stuff comes out, they're just a big fancy Axeman. Um, so these guys are going to be just fine to hold the front line for us. Uh, you know, we have right now primarily an archer army, so like when you look at what percent of our army is ranged, most of it is right now, um, and it's going to be peaking right now, so... Or it's peaked already. So it's going to be on the downhill in terms of utility. So we need to go ahead and use these guys. We're going to use them against the monkeys. Um, may use them against the elves. And yeah, I mean, if we get all of this stuff, that could actually be pretty sweet. Um, and then from here, we just attack Arco. And uh, that would be beautiful. Um, if, depending on how all this goes, I have to decide too if I want to stab these guys. Because, like, we're being friendly, but the truth is that they're out of the game. Um, now, that said, for the elves, there is a metagame reason why they want to kill all of these guys. Because you don't want to be seen as easy food. So them killing all of these guys, I would say, I would say is still pretty important for, like, a metagame kind of thing. However, they're kind of dead. So once it works and we start attacking and I have four or five hundred troops over here i think it's going to make sense for me to eat them um and i'll find somebody else to eat the rest of the monkeys or the monkeys can go bugger off and do something else um but we'll see um anyway i think that's about it for this turn we're we're um i think we're pretty set uh the things that midgard has to figure out do they gem bait? And I think they absolutely should, because, um, well, I mean, there's a few reasons, but I think the main reason is if my gem bait's going to work, it's going to be a lot more effective if he gem baits. The other thing we can kind of rough out here, I don't even think we need to. How many of the two siege strength? How many of these are like Marcata? 20, 
Disappointing value than many. I think... I think this is... Alright, so if we add these numbers together, we get... I... This is right at enough to one turn pop his fort. It's right at enough. Um, I think. Because it's a 750 fort. Uh, he's got about 500 dudes present. Um, and a lot of these guys are siege strength to a pop. And I think these cave cows are actually really good siegers as well. Yeah. The Marcata, which is the most numerous here, are garbage um, at sieging. They're only... Yeah, 0.3. They might not quite one turn pop it. They should do something really close. It's actually better if they don't one turn pop it, because then you know they're... Well, you don't know. Well, no, actually, I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. And we're also open to going back to Peace with the Monkeys. This definitely is a bit of a dick measuring contest. Um, uh, but I'm packing a lot of heat, guys. I'm packing a lot of heat. We're And I've got units I need to get rid of. Which we actually built reasonably recently. But yeah, we got to get these archers off the payroll. Um... Yeah, it's also delayed taking this turn, which is a bit annoying. And it's delayed. This War with the Monkeys delayed me fording this. So we'll have to see. Uh, in terms of research priorities, I've been finicky with these. So we're going to get Conjuration 5 this turn. That's going to leave leftover. Um, so let's say it's 500 and then we'll leave 10 over. So that's going to leave um, 250. Oh, that's actually not quite enough to hit all three, which is what I need for mist form. Hmm. I was making a hammer here. I think I can have my guys doing sanguine dousing, dousing rods do something else, or research. And that will put us up at the, the requisite uh, I'm actually going to get out my calculator real quick. So 500 plus 300. I basically need to be at 800. I need to be actually at 790. So one more guy I think will do it. One more dude. Yeah, this... Should get us in the door. Should get us in the door. So yeah, I think we'll get these three this turn. That's going to be super nice. Uh, we already got Conjuration 4, which means I can start doing Voice of Apsu, which I'm having her do. Uh, so that's kind of nice. She can also Cloud Trap these too. Do Horde of Skeletons. If we need to cut off retreat routes. But we'll see. We're going to hang tight right now, and we'll attack him in a moment. Um, but I think I think that's about it, guys. I don't think there's too much else to talk about. Well, let's, we'll talk a little bit more about research. Construction 6. So we'll, let's time this out. This is next turn. Um, this will be the turn after, because um, this is going to be... Uh, what, 400, I think, for that? So it's going to be 600 total. So we'll be this will be the turn after, and I'll chip away at Construction 5. This will be the turn after that, and then we'll have chipped away a decent amount at Construction 6. Um, and this will probably be two turns after that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is my guess, which puts us right at, like, turn 33. So... I should have all this before my god comes out. I think my god can come out at like 30 or 32, so it's possible they come out early. If they do, we'll probably get rid of the Thaumaturgy research. Um, but yeah, that is, I think, it, guys. Um, sorry, I was kind of low energy. We'll be back uh, more exciting 
where we'll be back higher energy and um, more exciting in the next episode. So tune back in then. See ya.